So you guys have learned about um, some products from some pretty innovative companies. Uh, I'm going to make the assumption that you all know what the cloud is. Raise your hand if you don't. Okay, good. All right. So I want to take a little bit of a different approach here today. Um, my, I spent 11 years at Microsoft, and I'm in Amazon Web Services now, and I focus um, almost entirely on cloud security. Um, how many of you were in my talk uh, yesterday at 530 um, at, the, at the Cloud Expo? Okay, so just a couple of you. But good, because now I can ask the same question I asked before. Um, I, I, I like to start out by just sort of gauging um, where people are at when they hear the word cloud security. If, if you hear these two words put together, cloud security, how many of you, um, how many of you actually think this is a natural um, merging of two terms that uh, makes complete sense and that it gives you no fear whatsoever and you are completely convinced that the notion of cloud security uh, is, is number one, true, and number two, better than anything you could ever do by yourself. Does, does, does this describe anyone in the room? Okay. I've never actually had anyone answer yes to that question. <laughs> um, so I'm a little surprised, but I just like to talk to the, the three of you a little bit later because I'm curious why that's already true for you. Okay. Uh, second response: How many of you believe that with the appropriate education from your cloud providers, in addition to the appropriate transparency from your cloud providers, in addition to being willing to unlearn what you knew before, and believe a, a few certain new things can come to expect that cloud security might make sense. How many of you? That, okay, okay. So, now, boys and girls, actually, it's, okay, okay, okay boys and girls, okay, great. I'm, I'm good. Uh, I was a minute nervous there for a moment. There, there's only one other answer to this question, and that answer is there's no such thing as cloud security. All the rest of you must believe this is true, am I correct? So when I say cloud security, uh, what actually happens is your sphincter clench is so tight that you can make diamonds in your ass. <laughs> is, 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 this, is this what I mean? Right? Okay. What I would like to do is take the remaining four minutes <laughs> that I have and actually walk you through some thought processes that have been on the front of my mind for the past several months. Because I think that if we change the way we've defined security, that we can actually come to accept that there is a way to achieve security in a new world where we don't own the infrastructure anymore. So like all good evangelists, you begin with where your people are. And I'm going to do that by, be by beginning my definition of security being where you are right now. How do you know that something is secure? Says the gentleman who spilled red wine in his pants. How do you know that something is secure? Well, you know it because you know where it is. And by virtue of the fact that you know where it is, you are able to maintain or to, to proclaim some statement of ownership. And proclaiming that statement of ownership allows you to make an assertion of whether or not it was under your control. If it's here, and it's my thing, I know that it's secure. If it's somewhere else, and it's not my thing, that I know that it's not secure, and I don't worry about it. Now, for those of you who have spent any amount of time in information security and protection and privacy and things like this, you, you, you might not have thought about this progression before, but if you reach deep down, this is really what was going on in your mind. This is how we achieved the, the definition of security by essentially determining what it means to say that we are in control of something. And the upper attributes were the mechanism size which we measured the ability to say whether we were in control. And it, it worked through this notion of layers of trust, right? Because we, we owned the hardware, we, we, that was our stuff that we bought, and we knew what the software was that was running on there because we either bought it or we wrote it ourselves. And generally, we sort of knew who our people were, kind of, because, well, yeah, we had these parts of policies that nobody liked, everybody violated, but yeah, we, we sort of trusted who the people were. And, and this layers of trust allowed us to build perimeters. The perimeters separated the things that we knew from the things that we didn't know. But 
something's changing. I want you to all reach into your pocket, and I want you to pull out this thing that's in your pocket. What is this? You, you've all got one. Hold it iPhone. up. Yeah, iPhone. You know, what, what is it? How many, how many petabytes of data are in this room, and they're all mobile? So that means the notion of location no longer applies. And when the location, location of, notion of location no longer applies, the security model breaks down. So we have to define it in a different way. My proposition is this. We can define security through a set of encryption and digital signatures, service level agreements, and audible security standards. A new way of achieving control. And guess what? You've done this before already with VPNs. Does anybody in this room own the internet? Nope. But you use a VPN to maintain control of your data even though you don't own the pipe, right? We give up control of the pipe, but we still have control of the data. My proposition is with good cloud computing providers, and if you'll note, I'm not trying to make this an Amazon. I think you can do this with all of those who are good. If you give up compute and storage, but still have a mechanism to maintain control through these elements, then we are still able to maintain control of that data. And we can still make certain security assertions about that, even though we don't own the disk or the CPU. But that is part of the hybrid cloud. No, you can do this in, an, in you can do this in a completely public cloud as well. And uh, now, speaking purely about Amazon Web Services, here's where you can go to learn a whole lot more about that. But I'm not going to take any more time to do that today because I want to be very respectable of everybody else. However. Probably in one of these eight boxes here, somebody is going to want to know more about AWS. And if you're willing to fill in an AWS box, I'll spend as much time with you this evening as you want to help you know more. Great. Thanks very much. Thank you.